<laughs> Hello there, how you doing? Tim here, a little behind the scenes video for you for my submission to the Artlist Home B-Roll Challenge. Um, I really hope you enjoyed my video. Um, first of all, because it's, you're great and it's good that you enjoy things. But also because I haven't shot it yet. <laughs> I'm shooting it tomorrow and this is a little pre-shoot behind the scenes thing. And if you didn't enjoy it, then it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, what, what, what am I doing? What, why am I here? What, what, what is it all about? Assuming it all goes okay, what this video is, is a behind the scenes to the whole process. What I'm filming now is everything leading up to the shoot. And then in the same video, you'll have a future version of me talking about uh, the shooting and editing of the video. So if that sounds good to you, stick around, we'll have a ball. If that doesn't sound interesting to you and you want to go do something else, that's okay, that's okay, that's fine. Uh, listen, just you do you, you just have a great day, you enjoy yourself and you know, maybe maybe we'll we'll meet uh, some, some other time, some... Uh... All right, you're still here. Let's go. The first part of this process was coming up with an idea. Our story begins actually a few weeks ago when I created a different video that featured a shot that looks a little bit like this. So that whole reverse idea was just something that interested me and so when the home b-roll challenge came up I thought you know what that is it that is it that's what I want to do but I want to you know do it more adventurously, add uh, sort of more camera movements and transitions and stuff into that. Your typical B-roll video that you find on www.youtube.com, but with uh, the whole reverse format uh, built into that from the beginning. Now, I didn't want loads of just reverse footage just for the sake of it. I wanted it to be justified by whatever story I was trying to tell. And once I knew that, and I knew that I was going to film in my kitchen because it was the easiest place to, to shoot in and light and things like that, weirdly, a story about a person who makes a meal and then decides to turn back time in order to avoid doing the dishes was actually the obvious <laughs> option. Or to me anyway, I couldn't actually come up with anything else. It just seemed right. It just felt good, you know? So. After this point came choosing a song. I wouldn't normally choose a song this early on in the process, but given the 30 second limit, every second does really count. And so by having a song planned in advance, it kind of gives you actually a bit of a handy structure which you can use when it comes to creating a shot list and thinking about timing and pacing and shot type. I started by using Artlist's uh, pretty powerful filter tools to make sure that I wasn't having to listen to songs that weren't the right uh, you know, pace, tone, genre, etc. And then once I had uh, that narrowed down, I actually started looking at the waveforms of all the songs that Artlist had suggested for me. Even though, remember, at this point I didn't actually have a shot list, I did know from the very basic story that I had come up with that there would be a point at the beginning where time would go from normal to reverse and then a point towards the end where everything would return to normal. I was able to use the waveforms uh, on the Artlist website to identify songs that would have a clear point of change both at the start and the end of the song. After about half an hour, I actually had about eight or nine different songs that I thought would be feasible. Some were more kind of jazzy than others, some were kind of comical. I ended up settling on actually two different songs that I sort of spliced together. The first song had this kind of synthy drone type thing going on, which I thought would help establish this tone of the sci-fi twist that would come. But it was also not too in your face that it would actually distract from the very, very few precious seconds of storytelling you have uh, at the start of the video. The second song, which you hear for the majority of the video, has this really good rise and release moment that I knew would be good for the very beginning of the video when, you know, time starts to bend. Finally, since obviously all the songs on Artlist are professionally produced and you never have any kind of rookie issues with tempo or pace changing throughout the course of a song, it meant that I was able to take the kind of organic end of the song and splice it into the sort of 25 second mark so that I could end the video with what sounds like the end of the song. After then, obviously coming up with the idea and choosing the song, the next stage was to create a shot list. Now that I had the song already there and it was timed perfectly to 30 seconds, 
it acted as a road map that I could use to kind of um, imagine in certain shots that I'd uh, come up with that would be most interesting to watch in terms of the reverse of the making of a pizza. This was definitely, by like a week, the most time consuming part of the process. For a dum-dum like me, you have to picture you have to picture what the final version of the shot is gonna look like after it's been reversed, and then you need to film it in real time, factoring in all the camera movements that would allow for the transitions you need in reverse. So it if a shot needs to look like a tilt down, track back, pan right in reverse then I need to film it as a pan left, track forward, tilt up. Does that make sense? Anyway, it took me a long time and partly why I'm so stressed about this. Final stage is shooting and editing, which of course my future self is dealing with. So I will see you in a little bit. Hey. What you saw at the start of this video was what I actually shot last night. Um, bit stressful, but we got there in the end. And uh, now is the time for me to talk you through the shooting and editing of this video. I hope you enjoy. So, we start off with some actually fairly simple shots, generally tripod shots. What I wanted to do was make sure that there was a, a visual distinction between the phase in the video and everything's going crazy in reverse and the sort of story that uh, gives context to that um, and so we have generally tripod shots until the moment that the stopwatch is clicked and then no such thing as a tripod shot in the rest of that um, it's all handheld or gimbal but pretty much handheld so opening shot and um, not much to say here other than this pizza was a massive disappointment um, not in taste tasted grand, but I went out and got a fancy pizza thinking I gotta have production value here, and it just looks looks, looks pretty crap, if, if we're honest. Um, but you know what, this is a story about a real person and, a, and you know, a real struggle, and the struggle is yes. struggling yeah. um, Moving on, so we have, of course, classic, just continuity editing here. The movement that Rachel has, my wife is Rachel, uh, bring her hands to her mouth in shock. We have in one uh, sort of medium shot and then of course we have her repeat the same motion in a wide shot um, and just cut the two together. Um, of course we then introduce the stopwatch and we have a bit of a sort of a zoom transition. Now this shot here, you might have seen it in the behind the scenes and I'll play it for you now. Uh, this shot here was probably one of the most difficult in the whole uh, in the whole video. Typically a shot like this, uh, it's a speed ramp shot and you would typically shoot something like this in 60 frames per second, maybe 120 frames per second. You have loads and loads of motion and then the very small moment that you want to sort of slow down have as the focus of the shot, it's no problem because you're shooting in 120 frames per second so you can slow it right down. That's what I would have loved to do with this shot. However, those of you with a keen eye will have noticed that this is uh, that the second hand on the clock ticks backwards several seconds, meaning I couldn't just run past at 120 frames per second and trust that 120 frames per second will slow things down and I'll get the nice shot. I had to actually do the motion really, really slowly um, and then actually speed it up in post. Generally, to get a stable shot, you, have, you want to slow it down as much as possible. Thankfully, it came out actually came out really well, I didn't expect it to. Now this is, this is ridiculous, I mean look at this. this there's nothing graceful about this. Um, but you know what, we had, we had some fun, it was messy, and uh, I had more fun than Rachel did. Pizza spinning, and then down into potentially my favorite shot of the whole video, which is these mushrooms uh, sort of floating and then being sucked up uh, into into the air again. Um, just looks really cool. Uh, saw it in a video once of sort of backlit uh, water photography using a fish tank. As you'll see in the behind the scenes, we don't have no fish tank. We have a big plastic box we use to keep random junk in. From the onion, we do a sort of zoom transition into 
I said the mushroom shot was my favourite shot. This might be my favourite shot. Uh, the peppercorns kind of bursting out onto the table, but obviously in reverse. Um, really, really fun to shoot. Then moving on, we've got the pizza uh, being circled by the pencil. So it turns out reverse videos have like a cult following and uh, people just love especially to watch things being drawn in reverse. So it's like the pencil is kind of erasing what's been drawn. Then just a nice little cut to Rachel reflexes of a cat catching uh, this piece of toast, taking a wee bite, looking at the empty nice clean table in contrast to the table we saw earlier, flicks the light off away she goes. So that is pretty much all I have to say for this behind the scenes vid. Um, I hope you enjoy the video, I hope you enjoyed this little insight into the making of the video and uh, you know what, just have a great day, stay safe out there and um, you know, um, farewell.